Today, I have the honor of interviewing Teresa Wong, the author of the graphic memoir, Dear Scarlet, The Story of My Postpartum Depression, which was published last year. Teresa is a writer from Calgary who had three children in less than five years. Her book is featuring on the long list for Canada Reads 2020. I encourage you to buy it if you haven't yet. In the interview, we will be discussing her experience of writing a memoir about her postpartum depression and how her challenging journey into motherhood has impacted her and her husband. Hi, Theresa. Hi. So nice to see you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for uh, accepting to do this interview with me. I'm very happy uh, to have the privilege to interview you. Um, I got your book, Dear Scarlet, that I have here, actually, uh, your story of postpartum depression. I got it for Christmas, and I read it so fast. I mean, and <laughs> within the first pages, I was very touched by the story and I was like okay my idea was right away I want to interview her if I can and yeah I'm so glad you accepted to do it oh great thank you so do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself to start um well I live in Calgary Canada and I um am a mother of three kids uh they're 10 9 and 5 currently and I um I'm a professional writer, like a copywriter for uh, a digital marketing agency. But um, in my other time at night, I like to write and draw and, and I've always wanted to do a book. And so um, I just feel really fortunate that I had a chance to do that. Sure. Oh, yeah. And your book is wonderful. <laughs> talking about your book. Uh, what was the first scene of your idea of writing a graphic memoir about your postpartum depression? Um, the the first uh, um, notion I had of doing a graphic memoir was when I was pregnant with my third child, um, Isaac, and I was uh, kind of it was the first trimester, and and I was laying in bed, and uh, I was having trouble sleeping, and all these images kept popping into my mind of the time when Scarlett was born, just the delivery room and everything, and and I, um, I just couldn't get those out of my mind, and some of them were so vivid that um, I started to cry, and I realized that I wasn't quite done with that story, like I had had a lot of um, I'd had a lot of treatment, you know, for for both my bouts of postpartum depression and and I had had counseling and, and I thought, you know, it was over, but there was still something in me. And mm -hmm. so um, it, it could have been the pregnancy hormones, too. <laughs> and uh, and so I thought I've got to do something with this, like really get it out of my head and onto paper. And so um, it, I didn't do that right away, obviously, because I was like three months pregnant. And <laughs> went through the pregnancy and, and had him and about a, a year later I sat down to write the story and um, and it just I realized that because the the images were so strong um, that really it should be a graphic um, versus mm -hmm. just a written prose story. Oh, so did you have any skills of drawing? No. <laughs> oh wow okay. I um so like I said, I, I'm a professional writer, but um, I never really, I drew as a kid uh, and I liked it, but, you know, kind of gave it up as many people do um, growing up and realizing that you're not going to, you know, you're not the best drawer, so you're not going to make a career out of it. And then um, when I had my two girls, um, I started drawing again just for them, you know, oh, cool. sit down, you know, with crayons and markers. Yeah. And, and they would ask me to draw them, draw them things, and so I started doodling a lot more. And um, so when I had the idea for the book, I had a, I had the script, like the words written, and I thought, you know, this should be a graphic. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll go uh, buy a sketchbook, you know, from Michaels, and and just kind of sketch out a storyboard really roughly, um, and then 
show it to a friend who um, was an illust is an Ill illustrator okay. and basically beg him to collaborate with me. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so I drew out the whole book as I imagined it to be. And then um, I met up with him and I showed him and, and he said, you know, like the story is so personal um, and, um, and vulnerable. Like, I feel like you should really be the one to draw it. And he said, your drawings aren't that bad. <laughs> and no, I said, well, not. I mean, I, and, and I said, they were that bad actually, because that was in the sketchbook. And, the, you know, I, I, I said, well, I can do about, you know, like 25% better. <laughs> Like, I know I have better skills, but not much better. And so um, he said, no, it'll be fine. And and so I just, um, I, I basically Googled uh, how to draw a graphic novel. <laughs> found a, I know, I found a really great blog post by this really famous graphic novelist for kids. And uh, she had uh, outlined her whole process, like starting with the kind of paper she bought and the type of pencil she used and things oh, yeah. I just copied the process <laughs> and uh, and kind of hoped for the best and and I I don't know all, all along the way I, I kind of expected someone like a publisher or someone to say like I like the story but you've got to you know redraw it or get someone else to draw it and um, surprisingly no one did that's clear but uh, <laughs> you mentioned actually the publishing aspect of it like I've read like more like some articles and interview that you did about uh, your book and something struck struck me like I'm gonna read here like in an article from the star by Sue Carter we can read yet when Wong's New York based literary literary agent first tried to secure a deal with a major publisher for Dear Scarlet she was met with re rejection we were getting a lot of positive feedback on the material but no takers because no one could see the market for it, says Wong. Some editors and salesperson came back and said, I don't know if people who have been through postpartum, and I would say like postpartum, I mean, probably de depression is what mm -hmm. you need, want to hear more about it or live it. What are your thoughts about this last statement? Um, yeah, so I did suffer a lot of rejection. A lot of people, you know, liked the story, but didn't think that it would sell and that um, there wasn't a market for it out there. Mm. And that, yeah, like that women um, who had gone through depression wouldn't want to, yeah, go through it again just to, in a book. And um, I, at the time, I thought that seems kind of strange because I myself would have loved to see more stories that I could relate to uh, about postpartum, um, all sorts of postpartum mental illness. Yeah. And, uh, and then it's that thought has been validated since the book came out because I get so many uh, messages and, and yeah, just meet so many people who um, say that it's kind of the first time they've really seen themselves in a book, you know, at, at least their experience with motherhood and um, that uh, that I've said some things in the book that they've always wanted to say out loud or that <laughs> that they yeah. wish they could have expressed and, and that um, seeing themselves really validates their experience and kind of shows them that they're not alone. And so, um, yeah, that, that editor was way wrong, I think. <laughs> Well, maybe that, that stigma still about postpartum mental illness. Like, mm -hmm. you don't want to, you know, I think there is still, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, and, a lot. And, yeah. So that's good. And I know in my own experience with what I've been through, I was looking for a book. I was looking for other testimonials. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what I really wanted to see. Hey, is there another woman out there who's been through the same thing? So. I totally understand why people who read your book say, hey, you know, yes, we're happy to be able to read your story. Yeah. And it, you know, it really isn't only for people who have gone through postpartum depression either. Um, I get lots of messages from mothers who are just new at it and feel unsure and, you know, they they may not be depressed or, um, but they definitely don't feel like they know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. so. and we see it in your book too. You talk about the postpartum depression, but we can see the reality of motherhood as well. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about postpartum depression, um, when people think about postpartum depression, they often associate it with being sad and crying a lot. Uh, but there are also other significant symptoms uh, which which people can experience through postpartum depression. So, can you explain what was it like for you? Um, in in the book, you'll see that I was um, just very tired all the time. Like uh, there are a lot of pictures of me just laying on the floor, <laughs> um, which I did a lot. I, I laid on the floor next to the crib when when Scarlett was sleeping. And uh, mostly that was so that I wouldn't have to get myself up back to my room into bed. And then when I heard her cry, I have to walk back to to get her. And so um, I, I really feel like for me that fatigue was a, a huge thing. Um, and just having very low energy, um, kind of feeling unable to, to kind of just get up <laughs> or mm-hmm. sit up, really. Um, and then I, I didn't draw it this way, but sometimes I wish I had. Um, you feel kind of walled off from everyone. <laughs> um, so like even when you're not sad or crying, you, you're kind of separated from other people, your loved ones. Um, and it's like you're in a block of ice and they're outside it and you can't reach or get through or, you know, and they can't get through to you. Hmm. So kind of a isolation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And I remember reading in your book too, you talk about some shame or guilt. That we're feeling like not a good mom or yeah absolutely um you know so much of our culture tells us that um, motherhood's supposed to be this really joyful blissful thing and that you know you fall in love with your baby right away when you see them and <laughs> and it, it that was just was not the way it was oh, for no. me and i thought what is wrong with me i feel like a monster you know like mm. i and i had never heard anyone else say you know oh i just don't know how i feel about being a mother or this baby and and so um yeah i felt like i had to hide a lot of that because um they were i felt like they were wrong thoughts to have and you're not alone. I think there are a lot of yeah people out there who have that same thing. They don't, they don't talk about it. Yeah, I mean, I think the stigma, it, like it is getting a bit better. You know, mm-hmm. there are more books out there than I've seen before. Um, there are, you know, celebrities like the singer Adele or mm-hmm. Chrissy Teigen, you know, who who come out in magazine articles and and talk about their postpartum depression and. And so I feel like um, people, and, and it, it, about mental illness in general, that people are more willing to talk about it these days and, and try to kind of end that stigma. But yeah, it's out there. And especially when it involves like, you know, a little baby. And <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, we want people to think that we're parenting our baby the best right we want to be good right. mothers and, we and be, be seen mothers. as good mothers and, and yes. so um but what that how you define that is is really complicated <laughs> mm-hmm. yes you're right um the first time you look for help at your family's doctor like when scarlet your baby was at 10 days mm-hmm. uh, well the 10-day checkup yeah uh, you were feeling depressed already you knew that something was not not right Mm-hmm. And your doctor did not take you seriously, unfortunately. So what made you decide weeks after that? I think it was six weeks after, yeah. if I remember, to tell your husband, I need help. I, I mean, I don't think I decided that. I think oh, okay. I had reached my breaking point. Like, I just you knew that something was wrong and that I couldn't do this. And, you know, I... I um, couldn't hold it in anymore and or pretend or, or hide it and so um yeah he he saw that and that and I'm pretty sure that he um probably felt pretty scared all the way through you know like coming home to to me every day you know like just um knowing that I wasn't being myself and and so he was probably relieved that I finally said something and <laughs> yes 
so I knew you. Like I mean, knew that it was really hard for you, and it must have been really hard for you because that's actually the next question. Like, mm -hmm. it was a really challenging time for you, but at the same time, it 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 was challenging for your husband as well because seeing you mm -hmm. going through this must have been very difficult for him too. Yeah, and he didn't know what to do. He didn't, you know, neither of us had really known much about postpartum depression. You know, we you don't talk about it like leading like during your pregnancy leading up to the birth and so um neither of us expected it and then um also he was he he was helping a lot he was trying to help take care of the baby as well because he knew yeah. that i wasn't doing very well at that like <laughs> and so um he was tired too and uh yeah didn't get a lot of sleep but then he he had to basically take care of us both and um and then he didn't he didn't know how to how to fix things hmm. yeah so that must have been a feeling difficult for him like trying to fix it but not knowing <laughs> exactly how to do it yeah there's a part in the book that i i mean i see it as sort of funny now but it, it's a little bit heartbreaking too is uh when i um accidentally back out of the garage and and hit oh. my garage door <laughs> uh one day while while trying to go out and um and then the rest of the day i was just everyone was fine but i was just freaking out thinking oh no what's he gonna say when he comes yeah. home and uh and uh he came home and, and you know called a guy and try you know figured out everything that needed to be repaired and then um i was apologizing profusely and, and he said you know like all this time i've been coming home and I didn't know what to do. I'm just glad that there's something that I could fix. Like, <laughs> yeah. He had and a solution so, for that. Yeah, exactly. It was something he could handle. And so, um, yeah, it was it was really hard for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and but I see that when you ask for help, like he was really proactive of, you know, like helping you finding help, and then yeah, he's a very solutions oriented person. <laughs> so. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what helps you in your recovery process? Like you talk to your husband, you say, I need help. And I, mm -hmm. I know, like you mentioned something that you did too, to, for you to have some help during the day, but can you tell us about your recovery and what helped, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, it was multiple things. It wasn't only one thing. It was a lot of things working together mm -hmm. and um, just saying it and having a diagnosis helped, um, you know, be like feeling heard and, <laughs> and um and uh listened to by the doctor and then um i uh went on antidepressants right away um and they don't work right away but after a little while they they were helping um i got in to see a counselor uh, who specialized in postpartum depression um fairly quickly i was lucky um you know yeah with the healthcare system it is sometimes you, sometimes a quite a long wait and but um, someone had a cancellation and so I, I was able to start um, counseling uh, just a week or two after um, I was diagnosed and um, like you said my husband uh, found us a postpartum doula um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> I have a postpartum doula <laughs> It was the best thing that ever happened to me, honestly. Um, and I still keep in touch with her. And, and she, it turned out she was actually the president of the Calgary Doula Association and, and actually very much in high demand. But she had a client who um, was approaching her due date, but then like went way past. And so she had some time uh, to come help me. And uh, yeah, I, I kind of call her my baby expert because I just didn't know anything about babies. And, and she taught me so many things, you know, just how to get through the day and, and how to kind of feel more natural at being a mother and, and kind of figure out um, everything that, yeah, that, that I was missing. And so, and she took care of me too. Um, well, Jill is a great. <laughs> mothering you. Mm hmm that's good i guess she helps you to trust yourself and trust your, your yeah trust my and gut and... like yeah <laughs> and uh and she you know like was also very validating like um 
I remember having a conversation with her because I had, um, I had actually uh, had the option of having a C-section because my placenta was very close to the cervix, okay. and um, I had opted out of that. And, and I said to her, "Well, I don't know. Maybe I should have just done that because then I, you know." <laughs> mm. She said, "No, no. You made the you made a good choice. Like you know, like." Um, and having a C-section comes with a whole bunch of other complications. And so, um, just like, just, just do what you feel is right. And don't, mm. you know, don't, don't question everything. It's, it's better to, yeah, just know yourself and, mm. and to know that you, you, you can do this. Mm -hmm. So how long was she with you? Like only for a couple of weeks. Um, yeah. Uh, when I had, but, you know that was all I, I needed like just a boost and um and then uh when i had my other two children we actually had her from in the delivery room on and and um she was with me for i think about a month with my second daughter and then um with my son she was only with me for like yeah a week or a week and a half and and she said like she's like you don't need me <laughs> But I do. <laughs> but I do. She's like, you know what you're doing now, like you know. <laughs> and she, she also always said like that her job was to work herself out of a job, oh, like you know, and to enable and equip me to to feel like I could do it myself. And so, um, but uh, I mean, the lovely thing is she always she said I, you know, there's no limitation to like if you need to call or text or you know questions like um but you know she's like, you can handle this <laughs> yeah, and i did <laughs> great experience with a baby and um i i read at the end of your book that with your second baby like your second girl you did experience postpartum depression again but like at six months yeah it was a little so how, was it, like, how was it different like from the first time or was it different in the first um, time? I, it was quite different it uh like I was surprised again though that mm. it happened because I you know we were really prepared we thought you yeah. know now this could totally happen and, and my husband had taken a bunch of time we're off work at the beginning um you know we had two kids under two so we knew it was going to be a little bit crazy as well um but uh yeah I I think the difference is that the second time I knew exactly what was happening and mm. I knew I knew to ask for help right away um, and not just try to, you know, muddle my way through it myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then the second time I I was actually nursing the second time um, because my doula was also a lactation consultant and so um, yeah, I, so I was um, way better at it that time, and um, and so when I started counseling again, um, I kind of opted to try um, not taking medication and instead to um, do cognitive behavioral therapy, um, and I I feel like that was really helpful. Just you know. Uh, on an ongoing basis, like I still kind of use those techniques and strategies to this day um, to help manage my mental health. Um, not that you know, not that medication is bad for nursing. If if you need medication, there are lots of safe ones to take while nursing. Uh, but for me, I just I just felt like um, I wanted to try doing something different second time. And I know that cognitive behavioral therapy is well known, like to. Yeah, they. I mean, I've heard yeah. that it, it it is just as effective as medication, but you have to put a lot more work in, I guess, in terms of um, kind of really sorting through the way you think, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, and kind of um, kind of stopping yourself from going down a bad path, you know, mm -hmm. in your thoughts. And so it, uh, yeah, it, it's been great for me. Good. And how long was, if, if you want to share, like how long were you with a counselor? Like, like you were, uh, yeah. Yeah. So with uh, 
Scarlett, um, my first child, I took, I did counseling for about um, eight or nine months. Okay. Um, and then um, with Eden, my second, um, I think I did it for about a year. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Um, and then um, when I had, uh, when I was pregnant with Isaac, because, you know, once you've had depression, you're higher risk of, of having depression later on. Um, I just went in for kind of monthly checkups with my counselor uh, during the pregnancy. And go. then like, for just a, a few, um, a couple times postpartum as well, you know, just to make sure that my mood was okay and that yeah I, I was able to handle things and <laughs> yeah so, I understand. yeah you did not, with your third one um, mm -hmm. I, like, you did not go to no i didn't yeah i was really surprised actually <laughs> um in, in the book i i also tell the story of um uh getting home with with isaac and and one night you know just being up late nursing him and and then like kind of looking down at him and, and having this like overwhelming sense of peace and well-being and <laughs> and and in that moment thought this is what those other mothers are talking about <laughs> like i can't believe it took me this long to get here <laughs> um but yeah and this many babies <laughs> But it, yeah, and so um, no, I did didn't go through. I mean, he was a tough baby, and and okay. it was still you know a hard go. But uh, but not the same um, feelings and, and it was the challenge. yeah, and so and I, I credit that to doing the cognitive behavioral therapy yeah. because um, it, uh, it it really helped me manage my 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 thoughts. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you found that help and that you, mm. yes, like you, we can see it's not fun that you went through postpartum depression, but I mean, in your recovery process, you had the tools and the people around you to help you uh -huh. recover. And then you were more prepared a second time as well when you said, I knew my symptoms. So you yeah. got help right away when you needed it. Yeah, no. And like, not that I, I am happy I had postpartum depression, mm -hmm. but you know, now in the years since I have realized that like I had gone through depression probably two major depressions like like when I was younger oh, okay. like in my in my teen years and and in university yeah. and gone untreated just somehow made it through you know um but not not unscathed like you know it, it had really affected me and and so I'm really thankful that having gone through postpartum depression i yeah i learned what that was and <laughs> mm. i learned that you know this is pro probably something that i'm going to struggle with you know for for life and and but now i have like you said the skills to manage it and the ability to recognize it for what it is you know mm. yeah and so yeah, in a way, like having postpartum depression really has um, made my life better, you know, since. So, so that, that's funny because you're not funny what you're saying, but it's interesting, like with the questions like I had in mind too, one that I wanted to ask you is, in what ways your postpartum experience has changed you and you kind of mm -hmm. talked yeah, it has changed you. It has totally, and um, and it it has given me a much better outlook on on life. Like it just really um, has improved a lot of things, and so um, I and it gives me the skills to talk about it with my children. Like if they um, ever, I the whole point of writing Dear Scarlet was to. Uh, a, a letter to Scarlett mm -hmm. and uh, kind of I recognized right away you know as she was growing up like that she was a very sensitive girl and, mm -hmm. and I thought you know she could be prone to depression too because mm -hmm. some of the time that's inherited and and so I, um, I I feel like now you know in our household it's much easier to bring that topic up if it ever needs to you know <laughs> if I never yeah. need to talk to my kids about it and uh, 
and they know I've gone through it and they know that, you know, I've, I've uh, um, managed it and that there is kind of like a way out and it's, it's a treatable thing. And so, um, yeah, I, I'm thankful for that. And I totally understand. It's an open subject in, in my family too, like with my kids, they're 10 and five. And, um, that's what I, what I've been through. I was like, I want, I want it to be an open subject with my kids and to be open about it. And we are, and the thing is that my husband, I was diagnosed like with postpartum bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. and my, my husband, three years after got the diagnosis of bipolar disorder. Oh, so wow. I, yeah. So it, he had a history in his family about mm -hmm. it. Uh, not, not me. So both having that diagnosis, like we're like, there's also a chance that her kids <laughs> might get it. There is. Yeah. It. So, so we're like, we wanted to be open with our kids talking about it. We talk that yes, we're taking medication. And, and I know my son is, you said you, your uh, Scarlett is very sensitive. My son is a very sensitive boy as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, he shares the, the kind of emotions he's had and everything. And yeah, we're open about it. And I'm grateful for that, that I, I tell my kids, like, if you don't feel right, you, you talk to us. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, that's that's a great thing. I think you know because otherwise it's so hidden and you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. and and when it's out in the open, it, it can be treated and helped, and you know. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and, and and they know, like they know, like sometimes I wear stuff. Oh, Papa, you know, he's visiting his psychiatrist right now, and you know, he's taking, he's going to see a psychiatrist on a regular basis, and I was seeing a psychiatrist on a regular basis as well. Um, not anymore but um mm. yeah so, so they knew like this, we're taking care of ourselves we're taking care of our brain and yeah yeah i think that's great and you know i mean who knows to you know who they might help in the future like with their friends it, it, i mean mental illness is not uncommon and so <laughs> mm. um, if they know how to talk about it and know how to recognize signs of it then you know they could be helpful to other people as well Yes. What do you want to say to parents who are listening and who might be going through postpartum depression or another postpartum disorder? Uh, I think the, the main thing is to talk to someone that you feel safe with, like the, that's someone who um, you know will actually hear what you're saying and not like diminish your uh, feelings. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, someone who will be able to help you get the help that you need and uh i think and that also yeah you're not alone um there are so many i i'm always surprised because um you know you read the stats and it says like one in seven or one in five uh, yeah. women might experience postpartum depression and so that seems like a very low number and and then um having the, my book come out and and a whole bunch of people approaching me. Um, so many people have said they had it themselves, or their sister mm -hmm. did, or their mother did, or you know, <laughs> um, everyone seems to know someone. And, yeah. and so that doesn't sound like one in five or one in seven. That mm -hmm. sounds like way more common than <laughs> than I expected. And and so um, it's helpful to know that you're not alone, and yeah. and that other people are going through the same things. And um, and like I said, that it's a, it it is a treatable illness. Like um, there are ways to get through it. And so, um, I yeah, I just uh, hope that everyone gets the help and support that they need. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there's also the idea of they're not to blame as well. Like it's yeah, like, uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's not their it's it's not our fault. No. It, it happened it can happen to anyone mm -hmm. so, absolutely yeah. yeah you're talking about it like that your book is having an impact already so what kind of impact do you hope that it will continue to have um i mean i hope i I'm very encouraged when people say to me that, you know, they loved it, but they also just pass it on to their friends or other friends, um, other people who are having kids in their lives. And, um, and, uh, yeah, some, some women have, um, 
kind of made it their mission, I guess, to buy copies for every uh, baby shower they go to. Oh. <laughs> and it's funny when you said that your your copy was a, a Christmas gift because part of me is like, why would anyone want that for Christmas? <laughs> And maybe no, no one wants that at their baby shower either. But it's I, um, I, I hope it helps people. Like I, I hope it helps, um, especially new mothers who don't know what they're getting into and who have all these expectations. And you know, sometimes those expectations can be quite off. And so, um, I, I hope it's helpful in that way. Um, yeah, I just hope uh, the it just opens up conversations and and uh, really helps people yeah and interesting what you're saying about some mothers that don't know um what motherhood really looks like um in the postscript, postscript of your book you say motherhood is intense it is both wonderful and unbearable often at the same time so were you prepared for this reality when you become part of it? Or what do you think would have been helpful for you to know? I'm not sure. I don't know what would have really prepared me. I, you know, honest talk, I guess. But uh, no, I was not prepared for what motherhood really feels like. And, and I guess just how um, unsure you can be about everything. And, and at every stage, you know, like my yours and my kids. Are, are older now but it's a it's a new challenge every <laughs> every day like you, you um but uh, but i guess it's it's going back to just trusting your gut trusting your instincts um doing things out of love and uh and really just hoping that 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 is enough <laughs> mm -hmm. good Thank you so much. Oh, thank um, you. And, I, and I wanted to congratulate you talking about the impact of your book because your your book is featuring on the long list for Canada Reads 2020. So yeah, that was a real surprise. I, I didn't make it to the short list, but that's okay because I wasn't expecting. To. <laughs> it's a very um, yeah a great honor and uh, and it's giving the book a wider readership like more mm -hmm. than and. Um, and yeah, it's it's done well in in the media and and with things like Canada Reads, uh, which I'm surprised by because I my publisher is small. It's a small Canadian press mm -hmm. uh, called Arsenal Pulp Press, and they're just five people out of Vancouver, and mm -hmm. and they just uh, put out books that they really believe in, and you know they're not in it just for the money. They wanna <laughs> they wanna give. Um, you know, voice to to marginalize people and and tell stories that aren't aren't told in you know kind of the bigger venues, and so I've been really thankful for them, and and they've done great a great job just getting this book out there and, and into people's hands or <laughs> to mm -hmm. be read piles. <laughs> yeah. And it is so original. The fact that it's also graphic. Right? Yeah, I think. I mean, I think that's why the big publishers no, none of them felt they would they could take it on because it's like you know it's got the double whammy of being a graphic and being about a topic that not a lot of people talk about <laughs> and so i guess they thought you know there's no way we can sell it mm. yeah so i'm i'm really just happy and grateful that um people uh, have responded to it in the way that they have is there anything else, something else you would like to add? Um, no, I don't think so. <laughs> we've talked now, we've covered. Yeah, we've covered a lot. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for, you know, the work that you do and, and for bringing awareness to postpartum mental illness. I think that's uh, it's a wonderful thing. And, and for, um, especially to do it on like YouTube or um, social media, because you know, sometimes people feel quite shy about these things and don't, if they don't want to talk, they can still kind of get, um, get a feeling of community, you know, online. Yeah. And so I, I really hope that um, what you do is helping a lot of people. Hope so. Well, what's helping is actually having some people like you accept to do an interview with me. Oh, yeah. so I appreciate that a lot. So thank you uh, very much for your time. It's very appreciated. 
and yeah, people can uh, see this on the on YouTube channel. And like your book too, like I am um, doing a workshop for parents about postpartum mental health, mm -hmm. and you know, I give a resource list, like books, oh, yeah. site, and everything. And then I had that resources done like before Christmas, and then I decided, oh, I'm gonna add Dear Scarlet. Oh, and that's lovely. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, like, and I, what I like about it too is that it's like, like it's easy to read in a sense that yeah, it's you know, fast <laughs> yeah it's kind of fun you can read yeah. it and it's enjoyable like with yeah the graphics and everything so i thought you know sometimes new mothers could be very busy you know it's busy with babies yeah i had but, you um, know it, it's easy to read one know? amazon reviewer said that she read it during their, her baby's nap time <laughs> <laughs> which I felt I didn't you know I didn't plan it that way but actually this is great because yeah it, it's short it's uh it's quick to read because it's mostly pictures and um and you know there's so much that mothers have you know as a demand of their time and so this this is not going to take too much time <laughs> no, it's perfect and and the message is whole I mean everything that you wanted to say is in there like in yeah your book so yeah thank, thank you. you you like my videos and you care about my mission to speak openly about postpartum mental health you can help me make it happen by subscribing to my channel and sharing my videos with others just click on subscribe i also created a patreon account to help you contribute directly to my mission interested just click on the link below my video, which will direct you to my Patreon page. Then, click on Become a Patreon. Thanks to you, I can continue to invest time and energy to produce and then present you quality videos on a regular basis. Do not forget to take a look at the benefits you can get in exchange. I thank you for interest in my channel, and I am already grateful to you for taking the time to look at its content and share it.